first of all, hearing the voice of God in the sense of walking in the Spirit, that is something that comes with growth and time. It's like a relationship with anyone else is our relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. The more time we spend with him in prayer and reading his word, the longer we've been Christians and walked faithfully with him, the more acute our senses spiritually are going to be. Much like a hunter can listen for things in the background of the forest and know if it's an animal or know what it is, if it's something worth tracking or something tracking him, you get better, your senses become more astute. Well, the same is true spiritually. As we walk with Jesus over a period of time, even over a period of years, as our prayer life and our scripture reading gains more depth, we will hear the voice of the Lord clearer and clearer. It doesn't happen overnight. Now, there are certain conditions one, if we're not already acting on things the Lord has shown us or told us, he's not going to tell us or show us anymore. Has he shown us or told us to do something or to stop doing something, and we're not acting on it? Well, that's going to stuff up our ears in a spiritual sense. We must act on what he's already told us for him to tell us more. Having said those things, and those things are all important and all very true. The basis of hearing God is Scripture. Remember, when we pray, we talk to the Lord. When we read His Word, He talks back to us. There is nothing the Lord has to say to me or to you that will not be based on rightly dividing His Word doctrinally. He will never tell us anything that is contrary to Scripture or not agreement in agreement with Scripture. The first and foremost way that God speaks to us is through his word. Don't grapple with this fact, I'm not hearing God, what is God saying? Read his word. That's what he's saying. Once you're grounded in his word, then he can show you further. Now, understand something else. Things can become nebulous at times, even for people who've been saved a while, even for so-called, quote-unquote, mature believers. We have a fail-safe mechanism. When the Lord opens, no man closes, and when the Lord closes, no man opens. It's called providence. If we are acting in accordance with our best understanding of what we think God wants, and we say, Lord, do not let me get out of your will or do something I shouldn't. We can trust him to close the appropriate doors and open the ones that are appropriate and close the ones that are appropriate to close or that is close the inappropriate doors. He opens, no man shuts, shuts, no man opens. Now this takes the question further into the next realm of how do we know God's will. But understand it begins with scripture. When we pray, we talk to the Lord. When you read his word, he talks back to you. There's nothing else he's going to show you that's not in agreement with Scripture. And until you understand the basis of Scripture doctrinally, he's not going to trust you with any further revelation. Now also remember, there are two things that can come into play that can counterfeit or obstruct the voice of God. One of which is what Jeremiah calls the futility and deception of our own mind. The other is Satan trying to counterfeit the voice of the Holy Spirit, which he can only do up to a limited point, but he can do it up to that limited point. Both of these things must be taken into careful account. Do not confuse our own thoughts and say the Lord told me this or the Lord showed me that when it may not have been the Lord at all. Also, remember, Satan can attempt to counterfeit the voice of the Holy Spirit. If we are focused on Jesus, however, in the longer term, he will not succeed in doing so. Then we go to the next level of relationship. 
the more faithful you are to the Lord, the more you'll hear his voice. The more experience you have, the more you'll hear his voice. The more you act on what he has already shown you or revealed to you or told you, the more he's going to reveal to you and show you, tell you. It's not a simple formula in the sense that it's not necessarily quick, but it is a simple formula in it's common sense. Begin with scripture. Walk faithfully with him day by day. And over time, you will hear his voice clearer and clearer. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings to your friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a at the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print for the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Memorial Catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendo. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.